Hey, look what I have here. It's Sony A6500 with 16 to 70 f4 lens and Rode Video Mic Pro and a dead cat. If you're not seeing what I'm holding up right now, you may be worried a little bit, but don't worry. It is a windshield. It is my $2,500 sweet rebound relationship after returning Panasonic GH5. Sony A6500 comes in this typical Sony box that summarizes most of the features and some accessories you may enjoy on it. Inside the box we're greeted with user guides and warranty papers. Below that a strap, a 5 volt 1.5 amp charger, USB to micro USB cable, eyepiece cup for the electronic viewfinder, 7.2 volt 1020mAh battery and the beautiful Sony A6500 which looks like a Sony RX100 Mark V on steroids. Sony A6500 takes only one memory card, but at least the door to that memory card and the battery is far away from the tripod mount so that you can change the battery or the memory card without removing your camera from the tripod. The screen rotates up and down but doesn't flip to the side. You can mount E-mount lenses on Sony A6500 and the APS-C sensor looks as beautiful as ever. E16-70mm to 70 millimeter F4 lens comes in this orange box. The color orange is supposed to excite you and as you can tell from my voice, I am ecstatic. The lens comes with a hood inside a pouch wrapped in a bubble wrap. And when the lens mates with the camera, this happens. All right, time to play the game. What's in focus? Wait, if you don't know this game, you may need to watch my Panasonic GH5 review. This highly scientific test demonstrates the autofocusing performance of a camera in everyday situations, where Panasonic GH5 failed miserably. Let's see how A6500 does on this test. We're in focus. We're in focus. Yeah. You're wearing glasses. I think whenever I turn, I must be in focus. But right now you must I think be I'm in focus, focus now. So. No, it oh, could be no. both. If I get in here, we're, we're both in focus. Just like Sony RX100 Mark V, A6500's autofocus is one of the best on a 4K camera I have ever seen. Are you one of those old timers who thinks autofocus is for amateurs? Well, watch this. That don't impress me much. <laughs> nice. My wife will be proud. Proper autofocus is very important for content creators like myself because sometimes I need a transition from doing the dishes and walking towards you to tell something very important. Also, I have a drone that can track me, that can track my car, or that can track a bicycle and it knows the difference. I have a phone that I can record the entire song on, and I have an iPad that I can make paintings on. So it's not too much to ask for a camera that can deliver proper autofocusing. 
It is 2017 after all. Welcome to the future. Ah, come on. Autofocus is for the amateurs, remember? Oh, please stop. So, does that mean A6500 is better than Panasonic GH5? E no, not at all actually. A6500 isn't even close to what GH5 is capable of. GH5 has 3.2 inch LCD touchscreen that flips out and it's easy to see under the sunlight. Where A6500 have this 2.95 inch screen that doesn't flip out. And the screen has a big glare problem. In order to avoid this glare, I had to create my own anti-glare screen protector. So I measured the screen, found an old iPhone screen protector, I cut it properly and applied it. The difference was immeasurable. Because the problem is not that the screen brightness can't be turned up. When you're in the photo mode, you can turn the brightness up to plus one, plus two, even to sunny weather where the screen becomes perfectly visible. It is just that when you switch to video mode, the screen brightness goes back to zero and it cannot be adjusted. Typical Sony. And the touch screen on this doesn't work in the menu. A6500 shoots 4K 30 frames per second, 100 megabits per second video, where Panasonic GH5 shoots 4K 60 frames per second in 150 megabits per second video. Which means you get double the frame rate you get from A6500 with more bits to do better editing and correcting in your video. And if you like, it can shoot 10 bit 422 24 slash 30 frames per second video in 400 megabits per second. A6500 has 11 frames per second continuous shooting with auto focus and auto exposure and it has buffer up to 307 images which means 36 seconds meanwhile gh5 has 12 frames per second continuous shooting and it can shoot 6k or 4k photos however it cannot focus while you're shooting in that mode it focuses only once gh5 has a nice joystick beautiful set of buttons a6500 has the record button here. The most unergonomic place you can imagine. That doesn't make sense. Luckily, there are some custom buttons, so I, I was able to set it up to custom two. A6500 doesn't have no post focus feature. It doesn't have focus transition. In 1080p, it shoots only 120 frames per second in slow motion. Panasonic GH5 can shoot 180 frames per second in 1080p. But then again, Panasonic GH5 cannot focus while they're shooting in that mode, and this can focus. But A6500 doesn't have headphone out, does not have anaphoric mode, doesn't have a custom menu where you can put in the stuff you use the most. The rolling shutter with A6500 reminds me of my drunk times. Luckily, it can be fixed in post. GH5 is splash, dust, and freeze proof. Meanwhile, A6500 is dust and moisture resistant. No, 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 no. Are you crazy? No, 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 no. They both have in-body image stabilization. And the importance of steady shot becomes very clear when it is turned off. But Panasonic GH5 has a better image stabilization. A better image stabilization if you decide to walk. But then, GH5 stabilization begins to sway and ruin the shot in a different way. Sony A6500 is six months old and in technology years, it means this is like a dinosaur. When it comes to battery life, A6500 can take 310 photos if you use the viewfinder and 350 photos if you use the LCD screen. Panasonic GH5 can shoot 390 photos if you use the viewfinder and 410 photos if you use the LCD screen. And when it comes to video shooting, A6500 can last about as long as a bottle of whiskey lasted for Slash in the 80s. 
which is 105 minutes. So other than autofocus, it looks like Panasonic GH5 is better than a 6500 in every single way. But, and it is a big but, Panasonic GH5 body costs $2,000. With the lens I got, which was 12 to 35 millimeter lens, it cost $3,000. And with the memory cards and the extra batteries, because you cannot charge it using the USB port, it cost me around $3,500. A6500's body cost $1,398. And with this, 16 to 70 a4 lens an extra battery a memory card and a bag this I, this is the deal i found on bnh it cost me two thousand two hundred and ninety six dollars and on top of that i can charge this using the USB-C port which means i actually don't need extra batteries i can use the power banks i have a6500 has 24.2 megapixel APS-C type xmor cmos sensor where GH5 has that 20 megapixel microscopic 4 3rd center. Hey! I just triggered the Panasonic fans. They're very dangerous people. You don't want to trigger them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and watch what I say. Oh, here's something nice, Panasonic lovers. GH5 has 225 contrast detection autofocus points. And A6500 only has 169 contrast detection autofocus points. You happy? But A6500 also has 425 phase detection autofocus points, which gives this camera the ability to focus in 0.05 seconds. Okay, we're, we're, we're good. So A6500's autofocus system is like LaFerrari's clutch system. It works in milliseconds. Where GH5's autofocus system is like a 1993 Honda Accord's automatic transmission. It is outdated, compared to manual gearbox it is useless, and soon it will cause someone a lot of trouble. A6500 is sleek, taut, and fit, and it weighs 768 grams with this lens. Unlike that chubby real cameras have curves, GH5 which weighted 1033 grams with that 12 to 35 millimeter lens. A6500 offers S-Log, S-Gamut that provides 14 stop dynamic range. On the other hand, Panasonic GH5 offers V-Log that you have to go and pay another $100 to use it. It's like an in-app purchase. A6500's low light performance is ridiculous. Panasonic GH5's low light performance is really nice too. But I think I like A6500 a little bit more. With A6500, when you record a movie in super 35mm format, it gives you full pixel readout and no pixel binding. And I quote, Sony says, Data this rich, in fact, equivalent to 6K data. So it clearly conveys exceptionally high resolution in 4K images. In GH5 review video, I tested GH5 to see if it's a good vlogging camera. So now it's time to test A6500 to see if it's a good vlogging camera. Me, 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 me. No, look at me. Wait, look at me. Let's zoom into my face. Oh, did you accidentally see something in the background? No, it has to be about me. Yeah, let's talk about me and only me. Let me put this here. Look at me. Zoom into me. Me. Yeah, me. And me, myself, and I. I gotta say, this is a pretty good vlogging camera as well. Just like it happened to me with GH5, I am confused after all these information. I don't know what to do. So... Once again, I need to ask the higher power about what I should do with this camera. So once again, we're here, and this is the part where we leave the decision to a higher power. All right. Even though we like this camera, we have to ask the higher power. <coughs> Heads, the camera stays. Tails, the camera goes back. Flip a coin. It's heads. Oh! <laughs> mm -hmm. I think for my needs, 
I'd prefer A6500 over Panasonic GH5 every single time. If a footage is out of focus after spending $3500, it doesn't matter if it's in 4K, it doesn't matter if it's shot in 60 frames per second, it doesn't matter if it's 400 megabits per second. It's just like how a vocal range doesn't matter if you cannot sing in tune. And that's exactly what Panasonic GH5 is. Panasonic GH5 is Shania Twain that cannot sing in tune. And that don't impress me much. Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah? Come on. Come, come on. Anybody. Come on. No, that was good. Come on. Come on. Late. Late. All right. Come on. Bring it. Bring, please. Don't, don't leave me hanging, bro. Come on. That don't impress me much. Mm, mm, mm. You get the 4K, but you can you autofocus? I think it's so much. Too long? This section is too long? Okay. I much rather have this camera and keep an eye out for the new releases. Because the thing is, Panasonic played its card. Now it's the other guy's turn. So when a new camera gets released, it's gonna compete with GH5 and the bar GH5 set. Which means Sony can release A7S3, A7R3, A6700 and they can have competing features with Panasonic GH5. And let's say they kept the face detection in autofocus. Remember A7R2 was released in August 2015. I think it's time for an update. <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I saying? We're talking about Sony here. If anything, their new cameras will have better and faster overheating and probably more drunk rolling shutter features. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button. I must have a subscribe button somewhere here on the screen. Hit that subscribe button and play Ding Dong Ditch with the bell next to it and join the world domination. And please let me know what you think about A6500 and the lens and the microphone and this instead of Panasonic GH5 in the comment section below. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and ho shakalan!